and welcome to Dee Dee's Block of the Month. This is Block 1 in a series of 12. There's just a couple little things that you need to do before we get started. There's a link below this video. If you head over to our website, if there's a file there for you to download with all the cutting instructions. So head over there, grab that and come back here and we'll get started. Welcome to Dee Dee's first block of the month. This block is called Goose in a Pond. The first one is your cutting instructions. So you get a sheet of paper with your cutting instructions. It's an EQ7 a download so it's very self-explanatory on how to do it but I'm going to go through it in just a second with you on how to use the PDF um, file if you haven't actually used it before so I'll just sit that aside for a moment you can see here that we've got another sheet that um, it is a coloring in sheet so if you haven't choosed your fabrics yet um, you can, you know, you get your colouring in pencils out and, and have a bit of a play around. You can download this file as many times as you want. So basically, if you aren't sure if the colours are going to go together, by, you know, get in there, have a bit of a creative time with your colouring in pencils and, and give it a really good go. Okay, so you would have been over to the blog and you found your supplies list and these are some of the things that we need. Okay, so first and foremost, we need our fabric. I'm using Moda... Um, a motor fabric it's grunge by basic gray it's a very textural looking fabric and that's what I'll be using throughout um, this series of, of blocks you'll um, if not and you haven't got anything organized you just basically need two colors okay so one is your background and I'm using white for my background and the other is uh, a color so whether it be yellow or blue or whatever the case may be I'm using blue throughout for for this particular um, block so you'll need a fat quarter of each of those and you'll have plenty left over so you can incorporate it into another block later down the track you'll need a working sewing machine with a quarter inch foot that is suited for your um, sewing machine you'll need a rotary cutter a cutting mat you'll need some quilting rulers um, this is the one that I use to cut all the squares and rectangles um, and I've got a link below of where you can get a, a pack of these it's a, a four pack and also you'll need a 12 and a half inch ruler and that's for your final measurements you'll need uh, matching threads some best press some pins and just some sewing notions so I've got a quick unpick some thread snips um, a pair of scissors and this little beauty here is a presser so I don't have to get up and down from the sewing, um, sewing machine to do any ironing so I'll use that to press my seams open as I go and then I'll do a final press you'll need an iron and an ironing pad and then you'll be ready to go so get all your supplies together and get your cutting list and I'll see you back here soon. Okay, so by now you've downloaded your PDF files. You've possibly had a bit of a play around with some colouring in pencils. I am using blue and white because you can see it on camera. It's got a really good contrast. And so now I'm going to explain a little bit about how to use this cutting instructions. Okay, so there is actually no written instructions for this when you download this file on its own but you can see here that we've got a b c and d now i have condensed it so it should only be one page that prints off your um off your printer but you may get two so you you're going to have uh pieces a b c and d okay so can you see that there i'll just pop that up there and then we we'll might be able to see it a little bit better all right, so now let me just explain some of these cutting instructions to you. Now you can see here that we've got a little a diagram of the actual block, finished block up here. And then next to it, we've got a little graph that has um, A, B, C, D in its in place okay so what what we're going to do this is where you can refer to where your pieces are going to go so it's sort of like a little jigsaw puzzle with your alphabet okay and then down to the next part is the cutting diagrams so you can see here there's a shaded part and it's giving you a measurement of three and a quarter by three and a quarter okay so we're going to cut a square and then you can see that this has a line going across it that square is going to get cut in half okay so you're going to end up with two triangles and they will be the components of our half square triangles just up here the next one is another square okay and it is two and seven eighths um, square 
and then the next one down is one and a quarter square but see how there is no diagonal line here so they are squares and squares alone and then for fabric D we'll just go over to the next page you can see here that we have two and seven eighths by one and a quarter so this is telling me that it's a rectangle okay and there's no diagonal cutting on that one and then the next column on this one on these pages is our patch count now when they refer to patch count they don't mean um how many many squares you've got to cut and then cross cut them for this particular one up here what they're trying to tell you here is that you need 12 patches so 12 triangles so you only have to cut six three and a quarter squares and then you'll cross cut them and that's going to give you your 12 patches that you need and that's the same for the blue okay down here it is the squares so you actually have to cut five and then this one here it's 20 in the white background and 16 in the blue and then for the for, for um patch d it's eight in the blue and six uh, sorry four in the uh white so if you've got any questions we've got our facebook group i suggest that you join you can ask lots of questions over there there's lots of lovely people in there that will help you okay so uh, the first thing you want to do before you start cutting is starch. I've already pre-starched mine off camera. Okay, so if you haven't starched your fabrics, please go and starch them. I, I generally do a double starch. So I starch it, I, I iron it first and I spray some um, Best Press or whatever starch that you like to use. And then I iron it again and then I give it, let it dry and then basically give it another go. And that adds a lot of stability into to your fabrics, especially when you're working with half square triangles, which that's what we're doing today. I just like to make my fabric as, as uh, stable as possible. So the first um, one we're going to cut is um, number A and it is a three and a quarter patch and we need six of those to get 12 triangles so i'm going to cut the blue one the blue fabric first so you can see here we've got one two three and then there's a quarter just past that so your small increments are eights and then your larger ones are a quarter so we're aiming for a quarter there and we can see that it's a quarter here and then we just cut along and then that's done and then basically what we do now, because this is actually telling us that we need to cut it diagonally from corner to corner to get our triangles, we lay our ruler on and I use my 45, I'm not sure if you can see that, my 45 degree angle mark there and I place it on the straight edge of my, my fabric. Okay, so can you see that there? I'll just move it off that yellow line. Okay, and you can see that's a, a nice straight line along there and it's giving me a nice straight long line along here. Now that's going to make it more accurate for you to get your half square triangle. So I suggest if you don't have a 45 degree um, angle ruler with you right now, duck off, grab one. It's going to make it a lot easier for you. All right, so now what we do is cut that in half. And then that yields two half square, uh, two triangles out of the square. And we need... 12 of these so continue cutting your three and a quarter squares and six of them in total and then cut them in half and you'll have 12 patches okay we've got all our pieces cut now we're from our cutting sheet we've got uh cut a which is our triangles for our half square triangles then we've got our two and seven or eight um squares and then we've got our smaller squares at one and a quarter in both white and blue and then we've got d which is two and seven eighths by one and a quarter strips okay so basically what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, create our half square triangles so i'm going to head over to the sewing machine and we're just going to go step by step through what we're going to do okay so now we're at the machine and we're going to sew our quarter inch um, seam allowance okay so you need to make sure that you have a quarter inch foot that's compatible with your machine on your machine uh, matching threads and bobbin so you're ready to go for that we also want to reduce our stitch length down to on my machine it's down to a 2.0 and that and that is small enough on some machines it can go down to um, 1.9 1.8 it will just depend on your machine so just do a test uh, so to make sure that that is um, a small enough stitch for you and the reason being is we're actually going to press our seams open and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that a bit later and it's just so our seams don't pop open now you would have seen that I've got this green piece of fabric here this is what we call a leader cloth 
And because I'm chain piecing today and I'm chain piecing triangles, sometimes your machine or your needle can hit it right on the edge and just push it down into the, the feed dogs a little bit. So this will stop that from happening. And then the next triangle will actually work as the leader cloth. So this is when I'm first starting and I just chop that off um, once I'm finished sewing all my pieces together. And then I just use it again and I just keep using it until it's full and it's no longer of use so yeah it's it's a really good um thing to use i use it for all my sewing um especially especially triangles okay so what you want to do is get a blue piece and a white piece or whatever colors that you are using okay and lay them right sides together on top of each other and we are going to sew a quarter inch um seam allowance so basically you just get going You can pin if you like. I generally don't pin when I'm um, chain piecing and the pieces are small enough to hold with my fingers. But by all means, if you don't feel comfortable um, not pinning, please pin. All right, and we grab our next one and we do the same thing again. Remember that your fabric goes right sides together before we sew. And just continue doing that until you've sewn all your half square tri triangles together. Okay, so we've sewn all our um, half square triangles together and now what we're going to do is we're going to open them up and we're going to press our seam. Just finger press at this stage. We can give them a good press with the iron a bit later. Um, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to just flip it over and your seams will be like this. Okay, we'll grab the triangle, we'll just open that up and so we reveal the square and then with your nail or with your finger or with a presser you can just gently run that along and that opens up the seam and it sits nice and flat and that's what we're aiming for. Now your half square triangles will need to be squared up and they need to be at two and seven eight squares. I move on to our next step which is the little nine patch. Okay so we're going to take our uh, blue and white one and a quarter squares. Okay and we are going to make a nine patch. Alrighty. So again, we're just using our we're using our uh, quarter inch seam allowance. I've got my leader roll in there, and you can see here that I'm just I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but we're just creating we're going to create a nine patch. That's what we're aiming for. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to get them all. You can lay them out like that so you've got your pattern and then you're going to get your blue square and your white square with white right sides together and you are going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so then that's what we end up with. Now the next step, you'll need for each one, you'll need two of those. Okay, and then you'll need one of those, these ones. Okay, so you get a blue, put the white on top. So you quarter seam. Okay. So now we press our seam open again. This is um, the reason they're pre pressing the we're pressing the seams open. It's just so that you can um, it, it it goes together a little bit easier when you're nesting so many uh, seams, and it it reduces the bulk. It spreads the the seam uh, out over the the block. Okay, so that's why we're going to do that. So basically, what you'll do is you'll need to, and you're going to repeat this until you've used up all your one and a quarter squares. You're going to make for each nine patch two of these and one of these and you need to repeat that um, and we're making four 
of these units, excuse me. Alrighty, so I have made the four units now for the nine patch. Now give that a really good press. Press all your seams open. Um, and when I say press, I mean press, don't iron, because you will warp it, okay? And then just set that aside. Um, you'll want to square that up to the 2 and 7 eighths as well, okay? And then just set that aside. And now we're going to make the last component, which is our four sets of um, strip sets, okay? So that consists of our blue and white strips. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to take one blue strip and one white strip And you're going to create four sets of these okay exactly like that okay, so we've finished all our units um, of our strips our nine patch and our half square triangles and now I'm going to square them all up so I'm going to show you what to do they need to be at two and seven eighths that will match the two and seven eight square that we've got here when we do the final assembly Alrighty, so basically what I do is I get my piece and I pop the 45 degree angle onto that seam, okay, and we want 2 and 7 eighths. So I can see there, let me just have a look, I think I need a little bit more light, can you see that there? Alright, so, and you can see there that I just need to take not too much off, just a little bit. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that bit off and that bit off. Turn it around, put it onto the 2 and 7 eighths again. And you can see there that, oh, there we go, we line that up properly. Alright, so I just can take off those dog ears there. And I'm going to repeat that with all the pieces okay so that's a half square triangle and it gets rid of your dog ears and you can see there that it's a, a nice beautiful half square triangle repeat that with the other um, half square triangles in that same fashion you do not want to go any smaller than that because your block won't end up being a 12 inch block okay when before it's finished it'll be 12 and a half before it gets sewn into the quilt so I can see here that I don't actually have to trim these ones they're all good to go so just measure them all okay get rid of some of your your threads and everything to make it easier for the final assembly just with your threads snips just cleans the block up and less chance of it getting caught up in your machine that way too okay so just measure all those blocks okay so we've squared all our pieces up and this is our a so we're going to be referring to our little diagram up here or you can use the color one it's up to you whichever you find easy but this is going to help us with our layout so we've squared everything up so basically what we're going to do now is we're going to lay out our half square triangles okay and i'm starting up in the corner and i'm just following the diagram on where they need to go just pop that up right up into the corner can you move that over for you okay then we take one of our nine patches and it goes in there then one of our plain squares and then so you can see here I'm just laying it out and what I'll do after I finish laying it out I'll head over to the sewing machine and we will sew all that together. Alrighty, so we're all set up at the machine and we're now we're going to do our assembly. So we're going to take that first row of our block, which consists of half square triangles and a plain square. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew our first half square triangle to the second one then we'll put this, the uh, plain square onto that, then our next half square triangle, and then the last half square triangle onto that. Okay, so there's our first set. Press that seam open again with just finger press it. Saves you getting up and down because there, there are a few pieces. And we just set that aside and then we sew the next one. All right, and I'm gonna continue making this strip set and the rest of the strip sets and I'll be back here to show you in a, just a moment how to uh, put the final pieces together.
All right, so we've sewn all our strip sets together. We've got five in total and we're going to now assemble the block. So basically what I've done is I've laid it back out exactly how it was on the um, design little mini design board and I've put row one down to row five. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take row one, okay, which is our half square triangles with our square in it and row two, which is our first uh, nine patch and strip set. Okay, and we're going to lay that right sides together on top of one another and then we're going to nest these seams so you're going to need four pins I always pin when I'm doing this because this is when you will actually have it move and that sort of stuff on you so what I'm going to do now is uh, nest these seams together okay and this is when you need to make sure that everything's lining up okay so we can start sewing away and I just go over my pins, I don't take them out, as I said earlier, I just seem to, I always muck it up when I take the pin out, so I leave them in and I just go over, over my pins a little bit slower, there that it is all lined up, we haven't lost any of our triangle points, it's looking very good, and I'm very happy with that, and basically now I'll just continue doing that, so I'll add the next strip onto this one, and I just keep doing that for the five. Okay, so we've sewn all our block together and I've given it a good press and I've trimmed off all the straggly bits and, and everything like that. I've hit it with a little bit of starch just to make it a little bit stable. Um, your block should measure around about the 12 and a half mark. Mine's just slightly smaller, but I'm not going to worry about that because you can see here with that quarter inch that when I sew a sashing or sew another block to it I'm going to be able to still not lose my points all the way around so I'm not too stressed about that you want to aim for the 12 and a half um, but don't trim it just leave it as it is and when we assemble the block after we've made our 12 um, our quilt when we go to assemble it we can um, we can worry about that then okay so that was our block for this month I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell beside the subscribe button so you don't miss any future posts. And also we have our Facebook group linked down the bo bottom as well. Click on that and head over to the group, join and share your creations and I hope you really enjoyed the Goose in the Pond block. Until next time, happy quilting everybody and I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.